Welcome to this series of self-portrait in 3 minutes. The Uffizi Gallery self-portrait artist collection told in 180 seconds. Today I'm talking to you about Angelica Kaufmann's self-portrait. The artist was an 18th century Swiss painteress, major representative of a new classical painting and historical genre. Her self-portrait is dated to 1787 and was brought to Florence after a former version donated to the museum by an Angelica's friend. Since the work was not deemed worthy for the prestigious Florentine collection, she painted this second self-portrait, where, as an allegory of painting, she looks younger than she was actually at that time. Her expression face reveals a bashful personality, also aimed at continents and equilibrium, preponderant traits of new classical art. Her white dress, reminiscent of a Greek peplos, similar to that of a classical statues, surprisingly not so different to the garment of the same pattern on gable statues, which Angelica must have known through some prints. The artist Chiasmus is the same we find in the figure of Calypso she painted in the Sorrow of Telemachus, a work today displayed at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. What must be observed in Diophytes' portrait are some details with which Angelica wants to highlight particular themes. The key element in the painting can be seen at the center of the artist's belt. A cameo here produced features the dispute of Attica, a very famous episode from the Greek mythology with which Athena and Poseidon fight over Athens' region, a strife eventually won by Athena. The image is to emphasize the female sex in emancipation, notably with the presence of Athena who, as an intellect goddess, is chosen by the artist to reaffirm her role not only as a painteress, but first and foremost as a gross woman, since grossmanship was then ranked as an activity intellectually more noble than painting, as it entails a creative process in the, the artistic act. This statement is seen then in the portrait with the featuring of the mechanical pencil the artist has in her right hand therefore not the classical brush, and the drawings album in her left. Angelica wants to be ranked as a history painteress, a genre aimed at celebrating the deeds of the past and traditional foreclose to women until then. Since her childhood Angelica had proved to be an enfant prodige, from the earliest years she showed to be very gift in draughtsmanship and painting arts initially taught by her father who was a skilled painter. She also stood out as a musician and opera singer, matters she learned from her mother. After first travelling to Italy in the 1760s, she moves to London, where she is one of only two women to found the Royal Art Academy. She returns to Italy in the 1780s, settling in Rome, where she is highly appreciated in the international cultural circle, notably among the Grand Tours travelers. She had a great intellectual affinity with Goethe, of whom the artist made a portrait. Winkelmann, of whom she made a portrait as well, praises her for the singing talent. The artist dies in Rome in 1807 and is honored with solemn funerals in the city. The ceremony femoral decorations were designed by the famous sculptor Antonio Canova. She was buried in Sant'Andrea delle Frate Church within her husband's tomb according to her express will, although many claimed for a burial of her in the Pantheon. See you at the next self-portrait.